Hey, it's Andrew Huang. Thought I'd make this video because everyone wants to know whether this is a worthwhile investment for themselves and why something that looks as cute and tiny as this is so expensive. I'm gonna share the good and the bad with you and I think by the end of this video, you'll know exactly what the OP1 is capable of and whether it's right for you. Let's start with what you immediately see, the physical instrument. It's actually a little heavier than you might expect. The build quality is fantastic. All the components are top notch. The screen is sharp and bright and these color coded multifunction knobs make a whole lot of sense within the UI. So how about inside? What are the features? Well, it's got a whole bunch of different synthesizer engines. It's got a sampler. It's got another sampler that's specifically tailored to drums. It's got delicious onboard effects. It's got a hidden helicopter game. It's got a ton of creative sequencer modes. It's got a four track recorder that lets you cut and paste and loop and perform and mix. It's got a radio. And just be all about her. You can listen to the radio or sample it. You can record external audio with the built-in mic or the line input. You can resample internal audio. You can USB it to your computer and now you have a MIDI controller. And I think with all that, I've covered the main features. How's the sound quality? Well, you've got this output here and it sounds fantastic. Here's a list of artists that have used the OP-1, so it's good enough for them. One other thing. I have never been as happy with battery life in any device as I have with the OP-1. I've had this for two years, and if you watch my channel, you know how much I use it. I think I've plugged it into charge between 10 and 15 times. I brought it with me on a two week tour through the States, played it on stage every single night, didn't plug it in the whole time. Can we just put this battery in my phone? Let's talk about some cons though, because it's not perfect. It's amazing, but it's not perfect. The built-in speaker, Pretty tinny. Four tracks to record with is quite limiting. You can record two or three tracks together into one and combine them, but it's kind of a hassle. You can also use only one effect at a time on any given instrument and only one effect at a time on the master bus. Naming presets is really annoying. When you save presets, they're just time stamped and you have to connect to a computer to rename them. But when you're connected to a computer, you can't play the sounds. So you have to find some way to remember what they all are if you want to give them names that have any relevance to what they sound like. Lastly, these keys are not velocity sensitive. I don't miss it as much as I thought I would, but obviously for many types of music, it's really good to have that extra dimension of expression. So how about the price? There's no way around it. The thing is about a thousand bucks. It's hefty. I had my eye on it for years before I took the plunge and I have no regrets, but I don't think the OP-1 is for everybody. More on that in a second. I wanna show you why I think the OP-1 is worth the price tag and I'm gonna do that by comparing it to two other pieces of gear that I use a lot. I have them right beside me. This is the Ableton Push 2 and the Native Instruments Complete Control S61. What do you think? Do they look pro, sleek? rugged, functional. In my experience, they are all of the above, and guess what? They're cheaper than the OP-1. Amazon has the push at $7.99 and the control at $6.99. So why is this so much more pricey? Well, this can do more than these two things put together. This gear on its own is pretty much inert. To unlock its full potential, you need to pair it with the right software, and they each need different software. So you're dropping another several hundred on software, then you gotta have a computer to run it on. So when you get to that point, sure, all this is more powerful than the OP-1. But it still has one major drawback versus the OP-1, and it's the exact thing about the OP-1 that causes all the sticker shock. It's tiny. This, I can't bring to the park with me. This, I could fit 40 of these in a backpack. So yeah, it's just like this tiny little thing. That's what makes it amazing. So I don't recommend this to everyone. I don't think it should be anyone's first instrument unless maybe you have infinite money. If you've been into music production for some time and already have at least the basics of a setup, this will 100% augment your creativity. And maybe more importantly, it will bring you joy. It is so much fun to use. If part of your job involves music production or composition or sound design, this is one of the best tools I could recommend to you. This is one of my desert island pieces. The OP-1, f***ing expensive. Worth it for some people. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Hit the subscribe if you want to subscribe and the bell if you want to be notified the moment I upload something new. Let me know in the comments what else you want me to talk about and thank you for watching. Did I already say that?